episode 10 it's your boy dominic rich and the football pharaoh bro what did i tell you yesterday you I must you the US <laughs> i told you yeah you did i believe you had a uh two one right yeah i had a two one i had by a one goal margin and that's exactly what happened good call man i know i know i know thanks for putting some faith in the and the boys, God must have heard you whispering, I think. Exactly. You know, sometimes, you know, when the tough call comes up, you have to grow some balls. You have to grab the bull by the horn. Yes, yes, liberty, liberty. And you have to make a tough call. Even though, sentimentally, I wanted to go with Iran because of the whole story right now. You know, forget the sentiments. You know what I'm saying? I am... Yeah with the Iranians, with the situation that they're dealing with in their country. No one should be going through these things in this modern day society that we, we live in. But when we talk football, the U.S. have looked the better team. They've been positive. They've been, you know, playing some really good football. Look at what they did against um, England. They improved from the performance against Wales, where I think against Wales, they were a first half team. Against England, they were complete, right? Two halves, they held it down. And what they did in the game against Iran is that they were the better team in the first half, but also they amended, right, the mistake that they made against Wales by not conceded in the second half. So I do give it to them. My criticism for Iran is needing a draw and playing for a draw instead of being more positive and going out there and play for the win. Because when Iran are positive and they're going forward, this team is as dangerous as Kylian Mbappe and France. Oh, they, yeah. Yes, they, they're very dangerous. And I don't know why they didn't bat themselves to go out there, control the game, and win it. They didn't, and they paid the price. Yeah, I didn't expect them to allow us so much time on the ball in that first half. I thought that... They would sit up in somewhat like a with a, like a low block and then use that deadly counter of theirs to their advantage. As the game goes on, we don't find the back of the net and we become we have to come more uh, we have to be, be more open. But you're right; like it looked like from the the moment of kickoff, they were content to get a point from this game, and that's very dangerous because even when you go into a match in the final group game, only needing like a draw. Um, the other team, it's it's straightforward. They already know what they have to do. But you, you gotta like decide. You gotta adjust. You gotta. I, I mean, they did look dangerous though. A lot of the time, they won the break, and I was a little bit nervous because I noticed in the first half the U.S. was playing quite a very high line. And whenever we won the ball back from Iran, you had guys like Tim Ream and Desta. They came in clutch from like from denying Iran from fully going on the break and and being and like on a one on one situation with Matt Turner. Um, but I was a little bit from like an Iranian perspective, like like looking at it objectively, I was a little bit, I think you'd be a little bit disappointed with that, to be honest. Yeah, I am, you know, somewhat disappointed in the way they approach the whole game because I would have loved an Iranian underdog, dark horse, fairy tale kind of story, right? You know, and with what's going on in the country, give them a little bit of inspiration. Give the people that are suffering a bit of inspiration. And they themselves were protesting the whole thing. But they they didn't they didn't do that. They didn't really live up to the billing of the, the, the win that they pick up against Wales. You know, even though that win came late, they didn't even continue where they left off from that game. And, you know, a bit disappointing. And Carlos Kirosh he has to take some of the blame. You know, even though it could be effective, I honestly do not like to watch negative defensive type football. I don't. And that's why I'm a Man City fan. You know what I'm saying? Never mind me wearing this whole Bayern Munich time here, um, this beanie. I just went up in my, um, my hats and I said, let me just put this on. You know, this will look cool. You know, plus my boy football fair is a Bayern fan. You know what I mean? Let me wear it for him, too. Thank you so much. You know, yeah. So, look, I don't like that type of football. And you got to give it to Greg Berhalter. You know what I mean? He's he's a guy that gets heavily criticized, rightfully so. But at least, at least he is positive. That's the thing. He's very positive. And, you know, 
by the way, big up to football Pharaoh. Look at his name. Round of 16 Pharaoh. The names don't usually display, but I'm going to just, you know, because you're creative with it. Let me just put it up, <laughs> you know. But, you know, you got to give Greg Berhal to the credit. He wants to play attractive football. Pass it out from the back. You know what I mean? Um, don't be too negative. And just play entertaining football for the fans. Look, man, listen. I'm not the biggest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of Tyler Adams. But this guy is a hell of a player, man. You know what I'm saying? He is a hell of a play. He never stops running. He bosses the midfield. He wins back the ball. He's he is the USA's and Golo Kante. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, man. He, he kind of is. And like, remember, like during the England game, he was dropping in deep uh, in a defensive role too. Like he was like alternating back and forth. That's what and, he does. That's what he does. Yeah, and. Uh, He's that enforcer. He's that guy. And that's why they made him the captain. But I think it he has also improved his temperament as well. I realize that. You know what I mean? And when he got the yellow card today, it was not deserved. But yellow cards are going to be thrown out going into the knockout, so he's good. But um, it was not deserved because the Iranian player kind of pulled down on him and went down. So I got to give it up to Tyler Adams. Yunus Musa. Oh, man, he was good today. And I think um, Weston McKenney, his performance improved big time. Sergio Des, Anthony Robinson. Oh, man, these guys are really good. Yeah. That, oh, Christian Pulisic, man. But, you know, we're sweating his fitness right now. And um, Christian Pulisic. Oh, yeah, we're, we are talking about this game, by the way. Christian Pulisic in the 38 minute after the USA dominated for the entire first half. He, Iran had zero shots at goal. Not zero shots on target, but none. Goal, yep. Basically pulled a Costa Rica versus Spain in the first half there. Christian Pulisic, man. You know, Weston McKenney, Dest, Pulisic, and he picked up an injury. What do you last think? I, last I heard. It's a, it's a pelvic contusion, a bad bruise. Yeah. It has to be monitored day to day. And if we check the USA schedule coming up against the Netherlands, that's Saturday. Today is Tuesday. I don't yeah. know, bro. It's going to be difficult because we play in the first knockout stage game as yeah. the second place team from Group B. So four days. Um, I don't know if he's ready. I don't know if he's ready. He's going to be a racing against time. That's going to be something for a but, Berhalter too. But then again, the fact that he was in the hotel – Waiting for the guys to come back, celebrating. I think he will be ready. I think he might be ready because, look, when you're bad, when you're injured, when you're bruised up, then you don't even, you can't even come out your bed, man. I'm telling you, you can't even move around. I think he'll be, I think he might be okay because if I'm pull a sick bro and that happened to me, I don't care what it is, man. I'm going to take the painkillers, give me an injection. If you have to take a bandage and wrap it around from underneath my crotch, come up on my pelvic area, do it. Yeah. Listen, if you have to put a patch on it, I'm playing. Snore a line of coke. No. Exactly. Bro, <laughs> bro, I'm playing. You see what I mean? Yeah. Believe me. You know, but um, look, another talking point here, man. Gio Reyna. I think there's something going on between him and the manager because um, we did show a video. I, I ran into a video, right, on Twitter of, um, you know, Gio Reyna, the team going back to the hotel, and everyone's, like, celebrating. Everyone's celebrating, and everyone's in a good mood, and Gio Reyna got his headphones on, and he's, like, in a, a, you know, like, in a really bad mood, like he's in his own world, listening to a bit of who you know, like um, Av Avril Lavigne or somebody, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know, but yeah, I don't know what it is, man, because he was not subbed on. And if we check the subs, Greg Mahal to call for his boy Shaquille again, you know what I'm saying? Boy Shaquille got a call on to the field, Kellen Ocosta, Haji Wright, Brendan Aronson, Walker Zimmerman. But when you look at what he did, Kellen Ocosta, Shaquille Moore coming in and Walker Zimmerman 
were all defensive moves. Hadji Wright and Brendan Aronson replace the inept Josh Sargent and the injured Christian Pulisic. So you can't blame Greg Berhalter. The game did not call for uh, 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 um, uh, what you call it, Gio Reyna. Yeah, could, I'm, could, I'm, mm -hmm. could he be used in the next game? As a replacement for Pulisic, like, okay, Aronson, let's say Pulisic doesn't start and you play Aronson. You'll have a Gio Reyna weapon to come off the bench. He has to be part of the team. He has to, you know, get with it. Yeah. I mean, a little bit certainly something that Greg, I think, is going to consider. At least I hope so. Um, I'm fine with Reyna not coming on in this match. But I do have some questions over the, the Haji Wright Substitution. Yeah, and exactly. Hadji Wright should have started. Listen, Sergeant. I don't know why. I don't know why he persists. You saw that time when Sergeant and um Weir had an opportunity to go two nil up, and they just were so indecisive. Yeah. More so, more so Sergeant than um Weir. But another thing, what do you think the decision to actually start Cam Cameron Carter Vickers ahead of Zimmerman? Think it was good? I think it was good. Yeah, I think he uh, he was able to, to to body some of the Iranian players without actually like um, fouling them. Yeah, in a way that maybe Zimmerman. I think Zimmerman, for the most part, aside from that that Wales penalty, he's had an okay World Cup. But I, I think it was good to give Carmen uh, Vickers some field time because, like, I mean, he showed up on the day. I saw the lineup mm. and I saw CCV was in there, and I was like, mm, all right, but. You know, I, I thought he showed up in the night. He had a good performance. I thought his clearances were were were, were good. Um, but again, I keep going back to like the Shaquille Moore and Haji Wright substitutions. Maybe this is might be an area where we disagree a little bit. But I thought that when Shaquille Moore came on, he he had a couple of really awkward like clearances. Do you remember that moment where um, the U.S. was scrapping away Iran's? Uh, an, an attack that Iran had built up, and Matt Turner was like screaming at him to like let it go out. There was a, a, cr a long lob in the oh, box, okay, okay. and like he gave he gifted Iran a corner from that, and and he was like, "No, dude, let it go." I remember I was watching. But you have to understand; these are some tense moments, man. They are. They are you know, intense. Saman Gurus, Saman Gurus is probably like having nightmares right now, and he should have scored. Yeah. I don't know how he didn't score, man, you know? From that header and the free kick, I thought it was a goal. No, not even a free kick. The, the open chance that he had. That he oh, had oh the earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. look, well done to the USA. Um, We could talk all night about this, but we got more games to chat about. Iran, they, they're going to have to – what are you about to say? No, we came through. I loved – I, I, I love the setup of our goal to Dest with that header assist. To, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Pulisic put his body on the line for that man. Exactly. He put his body. Good All stuff, right. man. Good stuff. At least you have some, you know, something to celebrate because last time around Egypt did not get through. Yeah. You know? And at least you have something to celebrate now. But look, what do you think? What do you think the chances uh, against the the Netherlands, man? You know, you think it's a good draw. I think we can have a go at them. And I think, yeah. honestly, for this team, um, obviously these guys, they're hungry. They want more. I think this coming through the group, it instills a lot of confidence in them. And I give us a chance, certainly. And if anything, if anything there's more pressure on the Dutch than us. We exactly. lose to the Netherlands. We lose, like, as long as we don't get blown out, of course. We lose to the Netherlands. It's like, oh, well, end of the world. Ooh, we're on the 16 exit of the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Even though, even though we, as, as fans, we want more. But they're under pressure to beat us, and they have not had as dominant of a group stage performance in, in, in Group A as we thought they would. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And, you know, another thing before we move on, Greg Berhalter keeps his job. Yeah, <laughs> for better yeah, or worse. I think I think he deserves it, though, because getting out the group, winning the Gold Cup, winning the Nations League, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Why change him? There's, I, been, there's been positives. He will, he will indeed be the man for the 2026 World Cup as well, in my opinion. He could, but just remember, Klinsman got us through the groups in 2014, and he didn't make it to the qualifiers. In, Klinsman uh, is not American. He's an Klinsman a, he, didn't rebuild a team that missed the World Cup. Okay, I mean, I guess that's exactly a, that's fair. Exactly, we'll see. We'll see. He so, might. Yeah, he, we'll see. 
So with that being said, bro, um, let us move on to the next game. We're going to spend about two, three minutes on this. We ain't going to spend super long. England three, Wales nil. This is what we expected. Rashford scored the first cricket goal of the World Cup after Sabiri's goal was given to Saiz. And Rashford again in a 68, good goal. Blindsided um, Danny Ward, it went through him. Phil Foden with a tap in from a Harry Kane cross. England, expected. Wales, out. I, 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 I effed up with the Wales top in the group prediction. I thought they would have done better. But Wales, after basically after Gareth Bale scored that goal against the USA to equalize, Wales just went on vacation, it seems. I don't know what happened. I thought they would be in this all the way to the end. I know, but they, they were. They were actually alive. And for most, the first half, they were like, you know, but still, look at, look at that. Yeah, five unanswered goals in the last two games. Shut out in both matches. and Not, um, not a good performance. No, it's definitely not, especially for a nation that made it back to the World Cup after 64 years. Uh, and, and you'd have to wonder whether or not this is the end for Gareth Bale, whether he'll retire after this from, the, from his national duties. Um, I think I think Garrett Bale might actually, you know, stick around. Remember, we have European um, Championship qualifiers coming up next year, and I think he sticks around, help them out, and maybe do one Euros or maybe not. You know, let's see, let's see what Bale does. You know what I mean? But it doesn't really matter because he didn't do anything. I think anyone could have stepped up. Harry Wilson could have put away that penalty against the USA. So, you know, I, I think it's probably the end of Bale. A great player, I have to say. One of, one of the greats. We have, we have to consider one of the greats, man. Sure. He kind of got lazy towards the back end of his career there, but it is what it is. Look, England. England. That's enough. That's enough for Wales. We won't be talking about Wales again. England, I have to say, you know, they did better than I expected. They topped the group. They won twice. They scored nine goals. They conceded two goals. So not bad at all. They use their depth. They show their strength. And they're coming up against Senegal in the next round. They would mm -hmm. fancy their chances of moving into the quarters for sure. They, they would say, hey, man, we got Senegal. And I, and, I, and I do fancy them beating Senegal. But with Senegal, you never know because you don't know what Senegalese team is going to pop up under there. Like we have Koulibaly scoring like a striker. You see what I mean? Yeah. You know, Plus, so... Yeah, and I expect them to give England an extremely physical match, too. Of course, of course. You know, so for, for England, what are your thoughts on England before we do move on to the, the next group? I think they have their eyes set on the latter stages of this tournament, but not to the extent of, like, they're going to lose sight of what's in front of them. And today was a derby. It's a exactly. derby or derby. I say derby. Uh, and they, they manhandled Wales, I thought. I mean, Wales did have a, a Wales did look a little bit more cogent in the first half, but once it all fell apart after Rash, Rashford's uh, free kick, which was a great goal, um, I thought England were just on fire because they they were they followed up just moments later with another goal. I think it was two goals in quick succession, yeah. and yeah. they could have had a fourth, I believe, it, around the seventy third minute. I think it was. Um, they had a they, they, Bellingham's chance, yeah. Yeah. and John Stones had a late opportunity how he put over look and credit to england too they, they actually win the group to put themselves on the easier side of the bracket once everything goes well for them right because over on the other side of the bracket you know there's there's gonna be um there's gonna be france over there you know what i'm saying there's um there's gonna there's, there's not not france there's actually gonna be um uh, i i do I do have something quickly I can pull up so we could talk about that briefly in terms of the brackets, right? I do have this from, um, you know, Bola, Bola VIP, right? And let us say, let us say France stopped their group. Let's say Denmark coming um, second. Let's just put it out. Let's just do that. Let's just fill out the groups really quick, right? Um, we know Netherlands. We know, okay. That, that's already decided. Those are decided. Let's say Argentina go on to top their group. And let's say Poland, even if they lose, they come in second still, right? Let's just say that. Or let's make it fun and say Saudi Arabia. Denmark, second. Let's say Denmark go in second. Spain top. Let's say Spain top. And let's say Germany avoid disaster and go through. Let's okay. say Morocco top their group by beating Canada. 
Croatia, Belgium, draw Croatia, go through Brazil, top, you know, um, Switzerland, go Switzerland, um, go through, and Portugal, top, Ghana, go Ghana, go through with them, right? This is what the table would look like, right there. England would face France. That's the thing. Yeah. Regardless to any other team that come through, England has France to face in the quarters. Yeah. Uh, because they top the group. France will top the group. Once England get past Senegal and France get past whoever they have to play, England face France. That's what's going to really pop off. I, I can't wait for that if that happens. Exactly. Forget about everything else we just put in there. Plug in. England face France. In terms of the USA, they could face Argentina if Argentina top the group. But ideally, the USA would even love if Poland go on to top that group and throw Argentina maybe over on the other side. You see what I mean? <laughs> Indeed. Yes, I do. Tomorrow's a very instrumental day in determining uh, our side of the bracket. Exactly. But the thing is, the, the USA, even if they go through, they won't be able to avoid Brazil or Spain in the semis. <laughs> you see? It, it's tough. T to be fair, if we even made it to the semis, I think I would... I would yeah, that would be a success in its own right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'll indeed be a success in, in, in its own right but with that being said um let's get back to the the world cup um digest and let's move into the next group and that's group a let's touch on the netherlands qatar netherlands go through van hal you know doing the thing again after all the managers that were in charge looks like they were not really on course to making it back but louis van hal did it and you know, he, he pulled through the whole health scare and everything. You know, it's still, he's up there in age, so he's lived a full life. I was actually picturing Louis van Hall in his early days, you know. Not that I knew the man, but I'm thinking, bam, in his in the 80s, 90s, he's lived. You see what I mean? He's lived. Yeah. And he could have one last hurrah if he helps the Netherlands win a deserved World Cup, 1974, 78, 2010. 2014 these years you have to remember but 2-0 over Qatar was an expected result Cody Gak put a breakout starter tournament Frankie the Young I think who has been overall their best player with the goals in this game and Qatar go out with a whimper becoming the first team to lose host team to lose three games consecutive games and lose all their group matches the worst host ever the only host never to win a game yeah and for Qatar, I think this is gonna sound like really mean, but like kind of fortunate to only lose two nil to the Netherlands. Yeah. But this being the last group game, you could maybe see why the Netherlands weren't as attentive. You know, for the Netherlands, I it's hard for me to get a pulse on them because I don't think I've we've learned very much from them in this World Cup yet. Like they've gotten wins against teams they should put away a couple of uh, performances that were not particularly convincing. They struggled with Ecuador. They left it late to Senegal. So uh, you still would envy them because they're in an ideal spot, potentially mm. for a semifinal run. Um, but I, I, I don't really, I don't really know how to assess them because I, I just feel like they haven't played their best football yet. How, how about you? Yeah. The thing is someone said that for the Dutch, right back in 2014, they won their three games, right? Bam. 2010, got to the final. What did they do in the group phase there? They won their three games, right? You see that? You see how convincing they were? Yeah. 2006. Let's go back. 2006. They didn't do great, but they, um, in the, terms of the group stage, but they, they got the same amount of points as uh, Argentina. So, yeah, they did do great. They did do great, but it wasn't as the previous two, two campaigns, right? If you go back to 98, they miss 02. You go back to 98, the Netherlands. You go down. The Netherlands, they top their group. The two draws and a win. So they've always done well in their group. We know this. This is a record. They've always progressed out of their group. You know? Yeah. And this time around, it wasn't different. But I still think this team has another gear to go into. I really do. I think they have another another notch to go into. And, and I think they're very lucky that Cody Gakpo's come up with the goods because who else would have came up with the goods? Bergvine, not him. Wout Veghurst, not him. Luke De Jong's not even playing. 
You see? No. So Cody Gakpo, he's come up with the goods. And there's also a stat that the Netherlands, before the game against Qatar, made the least amount of attempts. I think it was only Costa Rica behind them when it comes to attempts at goal. So, oh. yeah, they haven't been overly great. They really haven't, but they've got the job done. That's the most important thing. And they, they go up against the U.S., they'll fancy their chances of beating the U.S., and then they move on into the quarters, and we know what they're capable of doing. Another thing also, the Netherlands have still not lost a match under Van Hal under his third stint so far. So throughout his whole stint as a manager of the Netherlands, they have never lost a game. In his current... Um, in his current third stint, as well as like the last ten or so matches of his previous stint, so basically, oh, okay, okay. yeah, but consecutively, it's like um, it's like thirty something matches. I read back in twenty fourteen when they they lost. Was it wasn't it by um? Uh, did they lose by penalties or something? They did. Yeah, they lost in penalties to Argentina. So that's not a loss. So mm -hmm. yeah, Van Hal, man, and yeah. it's crazy that the Dutch had to go back for him. You go when back, he, to you know, and then when he's gone, maybe they give it back to Danny Blind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, 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 it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy how it works with with the Dutch team. They just keep using the the manager all back again, back again, back again. And, and another thing, you you talk about shifting into a higher gear. We talk a lot about how France uh, won the last World Cup. Uh, a lot of the time, they looked like they were an autopilot. Exactly. I mean, the Netherlands, like, they're still getting results, not playing their best. If they keep growing into the tournament they, and they put us to the sword, they're three games away from being the champions. I mean, you never it, know, man. You never know with this team, I'm telling you. You never, ever know, man. But look, just before we move on, Qatar. Look, even though, just a positive on Qatar, even though they didn't do well at the World Cup that they hosted, the controversial host where. You know, maybe some money was passed underneath the table for them to host it and the whole human rights situation and whatnot. But don't take anything away from Qatar, the country, as host. They've hosted a very good World Cup. They have. Very you know, organized. The whole, yeah, despite the whole no alcohol or whatever on, you know, the whole LBGTQ community and all of that stuff that they, they condemn because of their culture or whatever. Apart from that, they've done a great, job as hosts i gotta give it to them the team not so great but as hosts two thumbs up as a matter of fact four thumbs up exactly look qatar will be there in 2026 you think they'll qualify come on bro qatar walk qatar east to asia like nothing yeah that i mean the Asia gets about, I think they get eight spots. Exactly. So exactly. They go up. Maybe they can follow it up with a little bit of a, uh, more success. But yeah, as far as the host nation goes, they've been very tidy. I think it's very organized. The stadiums are beautiful, dude. Exactly. You know, you see the get, videos? oh my God. And they'll get to use those stadiums in the future as well. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they could expand their local league. You know what I mean? They'll be able to host future competitions. Maybe they'll have invitational competitions you know preseason and all of that so yeah positive there for qatar qatar there excuse me so we move on and um netherlands are through and so are senegal you did predict senegal to beat ecuador didn't you no i thought it was gonna be a nil nil draw oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i did predict the draw too and i think ecuador they played too well not to actually go through so i feel it for Ecuador. i really feel it for them <sighs> I feel it for them. Yeah, after that performance against the Dutch, I loved what I saw in that game from them. Yeah. And but I think I think you know one of my subscribers mentioned in my live stream that there's a curse right now going around of the teams that need a draw that they're losing their games because they're actually playing negatively. And if you look around at teams that only need a draw to move on really quick, you'll see. And let's see if it will actually happen, right? Look, Ecuador needed a draw. They oh, lost. Iran. Iran needed a draw. They lost. Argentina, a draw would do it for Argentina, you know, because, um, yeah, a draw and a Saudi loss. But with Argentina, it's not the same. Let's just say that. Australia, Australia needed a draw. 
All they need is a draw. Ooh. I think they might succumb to it. You see? Because Your move, Graham Arnold. Your move. Exactly. You know what I mean? Go out there, play for the win, Graham Arnold. Go out there, play for the win. Look, Japan, a draw. Japan are not in the same situation. Let's yeah. just let's move there. Morocco are in the same situation. Yeah. But they uh, face yeah. the yeah. task. I think Morocco could handle Canada. We move into Group G. Switzerland only need a draw. Yep. Are they going to fall to it too? Let's see. Ghana only needs a draw. So let us see how many of these teams actually fall victim to the current handshake curse. <laughs> so let's see. It's it's Australia, Morocco, Switzerland, and Ghana. Yeah. Directly four more, at least. Four okay. more left. Yeah. Actually, six out of eight, which is a very, very high number. So imagine, the, um, imagine if it happens to all of them. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It could. It could. Ishmael saw a 44 minute penalty. That was indeed a penalty. He saw be a very rash. And Moses Caicedo equalized in a 67 minute. And immediately, Koulibaly like, slapped one into the back of the net from a free kick that wasn't dealt with. Emphatically scored by the captain his first international goal. And Senegal hold on for a 2-1 win. I think this was deserved. Ecuador yeah. played so negatively. I'm like, what's going on with these dudes? Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Look, they, revert, they went to a back four instead of using three at the back. Sent Preciado and um, Estupinian into the attack. They didn't do that. And they did that in the previous games. They shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I thought the last 20 minutes was particularly... Um, negative football from them i was shocked at how much the, the the tempo of the game just died yeah in the last 20 minutes and i thought it was going to pick up and be intense after senegal retook the lead and that's and, and ecuador is going to be pressing them and going forward because they have nothing to lose but like i even though i sense like a little bit sense of urgency there was no risk that didn't seem like there was any fight it it, it just seemed like it just seemed like they felt like their whole game plan went up in smoke and i i it, like I said, the tempo just went down, it, and I didn't expect that. Well, look, Ecuador, I think it was a wrong approach by Gustavo Alfaro and his men, and Senegal, they knew what they needed to do. They went out there, and they did their thing. Ali Sisi deserves a lot of credit. I think he made some very good changes throughout the group stages. He brought in Iliman Ndaye, and he was really good on the day. He changes midfield. Pape Gay and Pathis Sis came in, and it didn't make a difference. It's too bad that Idrissa Gay, who made his 99th appearance, would be missing for the next game. Yeah. And he would he would have become the first player from Senegal to make 100 caps after Henri Camara has 99 as well. He would want his team to move on to the quarters for him to actually make it at the World Cup, or else it will be after. Maybe in some friendly or some Afcon qualifiers or something. But Koulibaly, Jacobs at the back. And, of course, um, Sa Sabali has been really, really good. And um, the entire team, Mendy's performance improved. Abdou Diallo, you know, the, the, you know, Bulai D up top. I think um, Ishmael Asar stepped up in Mane's absence. And the, the team has definitely uh, made Africa proud by making it you know, through to the round of 16, the first African team to do so since 2014, right? Yeah, I believe you're correct about that because we didn't have any African team that advanced four years ago. Exactly. And it's good to see that Senegal came through because it was they let they were um eliminated last time really heartbreaking fashion. And I think that uh Aliou Cisse does get a lot of credit for this because I think that Senegal what a lot of what pulled them through this game was discipline. I have to yep. say, a lot, yep. of, a lot of character, a lot of discipline. And I think Ecuador showed their youth here today. <laughs> it's kind and of talk, fun. Talk about youth. Ecuador, they could definitely look forward to 2026, where there'll be more places in Conmebol. But the, the only thing is, Conmebol is still very difficult. You know what I mean? How many places Conmebol has now? Is it going to go up to, it's going to, it's going to go up to a six? It's currently four and a half, but I think now it's, it could go up to six. And I think, yeah, yeah we're still qualifying. And then they do have a playoff team, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. maybe soon they'll just throw all the Conmebol teams in the damn World Cup because 48 teams is quite a lot, though, you know what I mean? And look, guys, 
Look out for us. Start doing 2026 World Cup content in the future. You know what I mean? That'll be fun. So, look, just to land the plane, bro. You know, it was a nice, fun episode. Just to land the plane, congrats to both teams in the next round. Senegal play England. Netherlands play the USA. So, look, tomorrow we have games coming up. I don't want to stay long. I don't even want to spend 10 seconds on these matches. But <laughs> just for quick fire predictions. Tunisia, France. I am going to go with a 3 one victory for France. I think they'll rotate, but I think they'll put in a dominant performance. I don't like teams that exit World Cups with, with zero goals scored. I'll give Tunisia a goal. 3-1. Yeah, I, I don't think Tunisia um actually get any goals here, man. 3-0 to France. Okay. Australia, Denmark. Oh, you know, I predicted both these teams to advance, so I guess it doesn't matter now. I'm free to pick. I feel like Denmark should win this match, but something... Something tells me Australia is gonna. This is gonna be a high-scoring two-two draw. Okay, Denmark oh, yeah. Australia nil. Denmark come from behind. You know at the you know low low down in the group to go through. I hope you're right because I had Denmark as my surprise finalist. <laughs> yep. Poland Argentina. <laughs> Oof. Okay, I think Argentina wins this. Um, I'm just trying to think of how many they can Poland concedes. I think Argentina wins this game. I say two. I think I think two one. Maybe I'm yeah. A, I'm gonna say two nil. Poland does not really score a lot of goals, even okay. though they have Robert Lewandowski. Just scored his first World Cup goal, by the way. And this one is a big one. Saudi Arabia, Mexico. I'd love Mexico to, to come back here. Um, but, but even if Mexico win, they don't guarantee a place in the next round, too, you know? No, not unless they win by some goals or Argentina beats Poland by some goals. Yeah. I, I, but I don't, I, I don't even know, think they're, they're going to win. I think it's going to be a 1-1 draw. I'm going for 1-0 Saudi Arabia. Woo. Okay. Yeah, I'm going, bro, because we, we, need, we need this. We need this for the World Cup. We need those dark horse teams. We need those surprise picks, you know? But yeah. look, with that being said, it's been a lovely episode 10 of World Cup Digest, but I can't believe we made it to episode 10, and we're going to look to continue. I, I can't wait till we say episode 100, and to commemorate the 100th episode, you know, let's have some girls! <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, man, thanks again for yet another fun episode. Um, your boy Dominic Rich, Football Pharaoh, subscribe to both the channels. Links in the description boxes down below. Football for a take it away. Episode number 10, the big 1-0. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll leave a comment below, like you said. Uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for Group C and D, the final match days in those games. They should be interesting results. Until then, we'll see you soon, God willing, until I'm up. Peace. Yeah.